Hello everyone. Uh, afternoon if you're in Europe, uh, morning if you're in, uh, in the US, and uh, frankly if you're in Asia, you're seriously keen. Now, I'm going to kick off. I'm here with Will, uh, Will Goodhand, uh, our juicy evangelist. Uh, hi Will. What I want to do is just start off with a question. Ha who has heard of System 1, System 2 thinking? And I think Will is going to launch the, uh, the poll. Uh, this is a first, you see, you have to try something new each time you do these things. Um, yeah? So who has heard of System 1, System 2 thinking? We just want to get a show of hands, basically. I think it's... Uh, We're voting? Yeah, there's voting? This is exciting. Well, it's the first time we've done this. 85% voted? Come on, those of you who've just got your screen open and you're, doing, you're sending email. Yeah. Now you'd have thought I might be doing this deliberately, just to get your attention. But no, it, it's actually uh, a good way to start, just to kind of get a sense of uh, uh, who's actually heard of System 1, System 2 thinking. All right, Will, how are we doing? What's the what's the ver what's the vote? What's the uh, the verdict? The vote is uh, seventy one percent no, twenty nine percent yes. Great. Okay. Well, look for the seventy one percent. I'm going to give you the bluffers guide to system one, system two, and for the other twenty nine percent, send in your questions. If I get anything wrong, as far as you understand it, let let me know. But System 1, System 2 thinking is basically being put forward by Daniel Kahneman. Daniel Kahneman is the only uh, non-economist to ever win the Nobel Prize for Economics. He's a psychologist and basically it's a model of how our brains work. System 1 thinking is the old reptilian part of the brain, if you like. It's the intuitive, instinctive, emotional brain. System two is what we, I suppose, think of more as thinking. It's the frontal lobes. It's the more, it's the newer part of the brain. It's the bit of the brain that separates humans from animals. It's the bit that we praise. It's the bit that we, you know, we think is amazing. It's the cognitive, analytical, slow thinking. Yeah, fantastic, and it's and it's rightly praised. The only issue, and this is, this is the important bit for marketing and for advertising, which we're going to talk about specifically, is that we think much less than we think we think. Yeah? System one is what we use, most people use most of the time to make most decisions. And system two, we really don't think and use very much. If we were going to put it in a kind of a computing power analogy, System one, our intuitive, basically kind of emotional brain, is operating at 11 million bits, yeah, versus 50 bits in system two. That's how much we use system one and how little we use system two. As Antonio Damasio says, and I love this quote, we're not, not, not thinking machines that feel, we're feeling machines that think and sometimes I think in business you know because we get very serious about it and it's large you know sums of money we're talking about and business is serious we kind of make the mistake that it's the other way around we think that people think much more than they really think yeah we're feeling machines that think and we've got to try and remember that in business and you know all the gamification talk and serious games is a whole nother strand of that and how playing games and being playful is all part of the, the human condition, much more than we, we think, not just for children. Okay, I'm going to illustrate. Um, I'm not sure if anyone can see or tell what the dots on the screen represent. Yeah, it looks like a kind of constellation, looks like a bit of an astronomer's opening of the, uh, you know, the, the astro lab. But uh, if I just show you, there, we sent an email, by the way, um, and it's the first link in this, but I will show you here. So if everyone can see my screen, hopefully as soon as you can see the dots moving, it's obvious what it is. It's a, it's a walking man. Can you see now? Uh, Will's having a look as well. And what's fun about this is you can 
tell it's a woman or a man or maybe a butch woman. Very heavy, happy, yeah? And this is system one working. These are, these are just a few dots. How do we know that that's a walking man? How do we know it's a woman? How do we know it's happy, sad? Our system one brain is evolved to take in all of that sort of information um, and, and it's been evolved to make sure that we spot danger or people, you know, it's, it's why on Oxford Street, the busiest street in the world, people don't actually bump into each other very much. We're not thinking about it, we're just using our system one intuitive brain. Yeah? Okay. So let's, let's go back and do, a, uh, do another example. Will, you'll have to, I think you'll have to be my assistant for this one, uh, but you can all play along if you're listening. What I want you to do is think, well, think out loud or say out loud even better. What color are the letters on the screen? Okay, Will. Red. All right, and we're going to keep going, so just quickly as we go. Blue. Blue. <laughs> you see, you see. Green, blue, green, red. Okay, and hopefully, if you've been playing along, listening, you had the same difficulty where the words, the, the letters arrangement, we know so well as a particular color. And then we have to override that with a system to, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, I've got to remember the color rather than the, the letters. And, that, and that's what's happening. There's a sort of conflict between the two systems. All right, another example. That's Daniel Kahneman, by the way, down in the right hand, uh, bottom right. A bat and a ball cost $1.10 in total. The bat costs a dollar more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? Now, come on, everyone, have a think. What would it be? I will pause. Now, basically, I suspect that an awful lot of you listening will be going, well, 10 cents. But then I think it's a trick question, so maybe it's not 10 cents. And the mathematicians uh, among you will go, ah, it's 5 cents. Yeah? Because it has to, if it was 10 cents, then it'd be a dollar 20 in total. And that is system two overriding system one. What what Kahneman says is people are not accustomed to thinking hard and are often content to treat a plausible judgment that comes quickly to mind. That's pretty much what we do and how we make decisions most of the time. Yeah, we're really bad at statistics. In you know, this is a, a case in point. There's another example. If you took a piece of paper and you folded it in half 50 times. How thick would the, the total be? You know, how thick would it be? Now it's impossible, but if it were possible, you know, we often get answers. Well, I don't know, Will. Uh, you, you've heard this one before. It's not even fair to us. But you know, people say, well, I don't know, it'd be a meter or maybe a hundred meters tall, or even a kilometer. It would stretch to the moon and back, and back to the moon. You know, that's how much we don't get. That, that's system two. You need system two as an override to think these things through. Anyway, system one, implicit, fast, intuitive, instinctive, emotional. System two, the frontal lobes, slow, explicit, analytical, learned, propositional, conscious. Yeah, One's unconscious, one's conscious. And what we're going to explore, the reason that this is so critical and crucial, a discussion to have in marketing in general and advertising in specific, is because this is how people make decisions. And in market research, what we do is we ask people for their rational, their post-rationalization. We're all system two. Quantitative market research is rooted in system two, asking people, if you like, to rationalize on scales what, why they've bought, would they buy, why did you do that? What did you think of this? And actually, most decisions are made system one. And what's missing is that we need a, a, a way of measuring system one. My, my metaphor is that system one is like the dark matter of marketing. It makes up half or more than half of all of marketing's universe, but we haven't been able to see it or measure it or acknowledge it.
and that's what this presentation is going to be about. So at BrainJuicer, we developed uh, a technique of measuring emotion, which was based on the work of this man, Daniel Kahneman, uh, not Daniel Kahneman, um, Paul Ekman. Paul Ekman, who spent his, uh, his life's work traveling around the world with suitcases full of photographs showing tribes in Papua New Guinea pictures of Caucasian students pulling you know, a, a different emotions. And basically what he did is he worked out that there are seven emotions that seem to be universally recognizable, universally applied Anywhere in, anywhere in the world. And they're sadness, contempt, surprise, anger, disgust, fear, and happiness. Those are the seven. And we've evolved an ability to read those emotions in people's faces because it's part of being a social animal. You know, we have to react to these things. The reason that five of them are negative, because we often get asked this, is because in evolutionary terms, you only really need to react when you see a negative face. So it's, it's about survival. Yeah? Surprise, of course, can be either way. It can be surprise good, surprise bad. And happiness, well, happiness is happiness. You, know, it's, it's, uh, you, know, you can relax. So what we did is we created, it is a scale, but it's a very intuitive, emotional scale. We put this poor model through hell, six and a half thousand pictures to get this set of pictures where she had to, she had to, well, she had to pull the face, but what we realized in doing it is she had to actually feel the emotion to um, make, it, make it work, to get this scale. Uh, and I shouldn't really reveal these stories, but I will. Um, surprise. Um, Apparently, the photographer was slightly desperate to get a good surprise photograph and did drop his trousers. Um, so, you know, there you go. You, you heard it. You heard it here. But which of these faces best expresses how you feel about this advert? And we want it to be as instinctive, as intuitive, and quick as, it, as possible. And you just click on a face, in this case, happiness. And then to what degree did you feel happiness? A little, medium, or a lot. And you just click on the face. And then you try and say why. And sure, the why is a little bit of a post-rationalization of why I picked it, but it's, it, it seems to be pretty good. Why is measuring emotion so important? And I'm going to share with you some more statistical data from the IPA. But the IPA, the Institute of Practitioners of Advertising, is probably the single best database of advertising effectiveness in the world. It's got about a thousand case histories that have all been submitted at, for an effectiveness award. So not a creative award, but an effectiveness award. And they've put forward a very detailed case of how uh, the advert has been effective. Uh, many of them are econometric modeled, you know, so they've proven that it's, it must have been the advertising that created this effect. And it's talking about hard business measures. So profitability related measures of you know, share gain, price increase, um, elasticity, etc. Yeah. So, and, and what they found, you can see on this chart, is that emotional advertising, yeah, is more effective and more profitable than rational campaigns, even in so-called rational categories. The most effective adverts have little or no rational content. So, this is the first sort of controversial 